Welcome to the Yo Podcast, an interview series where we spotlight leading designers, developers, and makers. I'm your host, Rob Hope, and today we have Dan Petty, a freelance designer, educator, event host, and prolific maker with a big portfolio of fun side projects. His energy is infectious, and you can just see he's having so much fun with his work. We chat about freelancing, what it takes to say yes or no to opportunities, his favorite client gift, the creative process behind his fun tech ads, and I put Dan on the spot to design a freelance portfolio from scratch. Yo, Dan, welcome to the show, my man. Yo, thanks for having me. Stoked to be here. You first came on my radar when I stumbled upon your one pager back in 2011, and you were kind of leaning into this right hand wall, this big, full spread background, uh, this reading right hander. Where was that? Uh, I actually don't even remember. So it had to be somewhere in Encinitas or Cardiff. Um, because that's where I was living and I was all about surfing at the time. And then that was probably the first time you leaned into Pro Web Surfer. It had the tagline in the corner and it was like a lot of white space. I love how people think we're about to talk about design for like an hour and <laughs> we're gonna talk about surfing. Should we just get straight <laughs> into a game? Let's do it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so this game, it's a little intermission called No Context. I'm gonna shoot you two different statements and all I need from you is to shoot back one of them. There's no context given, and I don't need any explanation from you. You got it. All right. I'll try my best. December 25th or May 6th? Dang, how do you know about May 6th? Uh, May 6th. Canon C200 or red? Red. No brainer. Dawn patrols with a crisp morning offshore or that last light evening glass off last light evening no matter what it is last night evening 100 percent 100 percent that's that's my dream environment (laughs) right there you i mean uh, can we cancel this and go do that i mean you know (laughs) dude (sighs) they just shut this thing off oh we have to you can't start talking Um, about that stuff man (laughs) kelly slater or jamie o'brien oh goodness how can you compare the two I would say, dude, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to say Jamie, only because I've actually searched with Jamie. I've wrote his sub-squatch. I have a sign board back here. Ranch life or van life? Do I have kids? <laughs> dude, it's so funny. No context, dude. <laughs> no. You got to pick one. Uh, <laughs> surf ranch life. Oh, my man. Your Epicurrence Ford... E350 or Tesla Cybertruck? Epicurrent, Schwarzmobile, hands down. Seeing your Bloom That design on a billboard in real life or seeing your Huli logo in the Silicon Valley series? Bloom That, I think. Yeah, Bloom That. Seeing Holler at the top of the App Store charts or seeing that DM from Ev Williams on your foot? Ev Williams, you can't beat that. Kevin Rose or Jack Dorsey? Yeah, Kevin Rose. Kevin Rose, for sure. Nixon or Red Bull? What are you doing with these hard questions? Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. Nixon. Your Rob Machado signed Merrick. Rob Machado. Or your J-O-B Robert. pink pipeline shoe. I can cut you off already, Rob Machado. Dude, that's a highlight of my career, hands down. Highlight. Wow. And it's a white knight on it. I mean, I mean, you can't. You can't top that. A highlight. Highlight of my career right there. I got to show it to you. One second. Wow. Okay, winding it down. Dribble of bee ants. This is so (laughs) hard without context and story and everything. Of course. Bee ants. No effects or Pennywise. Pennywise. Endless Summer 2 or Taylor Steele's Campaign 2. Taylor, Taylor Steele. And last question. Freelance design or creating online courses? Oh, ooh. Freelance design. Too much context is needed. <laughs> I made that so difficult. That was impressive. Like, you, you like, nicked all my boxes on everything that I incredibly enjoy. Dude, that was, that was awesome. I feel like we're the same Thank person. You. <laughs> 
Okay, so you dropped the reconfirm design process course. 20 video lessons to help people become faster, more efficient, better, you know, more hireable designers. How was it received? It was received great. I thought it did good. I, I had a had a goal to reach and we reached that goal. Obviously, I would love you know, more, but it didn't do less and it and it hit it hit the ultimate goal. So, I mean, I'm very happy with it. I'm very happy with it and people are still buying it today. Um, it, it helped set me up for another course that's about to come out, you know, maybe in a month or two. So now I'm just going to start, start ringing them in, you know, start putting them out there. A huge shout out to our season sponsor, Webflow, who allow us to build websites with the power of code without writing any. You can take control of a website's HTML code, CSS styles, and JavaScript animations, all within a stunning visual canvas. I use Webflow for my personal website and it's a breeze to make quick changes. You open up the visual designer, click right into an element, tweak, and then hit publish top right. The change is deployed and live in seconds. Brilliant. And you know what? Dan has also been shipping Webflow sites, including his recent interface friends site to take leads. Webflow is totally free to get going and you only start paying when you need to go live. Head over to webflow.com for your next website build. Wonderful. So like in your catalog of online courses, you know, stand out as a web designer, stand out freelo- uh, freelancer and that portfolio course, where did this course land compared to the rest? This was the second best selling course so far. The standout web designer was by far the best one. That one did just incredible in, in 24 hours. And I usually go by 24 or 48 hours purchases because everything slows down after that pretty drastically. The standout one did twice as much as the reconfirm design process. So, and they both did great. They both did really, really great. But uh, the the ones that didn't do as great were the the freelancer one, then the the portfolio one. I'm not here to talk about that one, but it was a really interesting release. You know that portfolio book at the time because it was so interactive. I imagine it just took so much longer than recording 20 videos. I mean, 20 videos is hectic, but it's like you made interactive text while you scroll and and inline audio and and quotes that were handwritten i mean it was it looked amazing but Thanks. wow like you got a ship right yeah yeah I, and i had a, had huge dreams for that i wanted to turn that into a big thing you know that book let other people do books and courses on there so i had a partner with that which is probably why i didn't make as much money but it just became too much work too much of a hassle and we ultimately uh went different ways Let's throw the same question I asked Traff the other day. Um, are course creators overthinking their course formats? Oh, a thousand percent. Like, should they keep it simple? Yes. You got to keep it simple. The, the more complicated you make it, the harder it is to to want to take the course and learn. It's got to be simple. It's got to be consumable. People, oh, I got a hundred hours of education on here. A hundred hours. <laughs> I don't want to watch that for a hundred hours. I don't care what it is. You can talk about surfing for 100 hours. I'm not going to watch it for 100 hours. <laughs> uh, you you can, uh, you know, put that down at like two or three, 10 hours max. I think you'll probably sell some stuff. That's so true. Just like, tell tell me it's achievable that I can actually get to the end. Exactly. If you tell me it's 50 videos, I'll be like, if I only consume 42, will I actually be, know how to do this thing? Right? Exactly. And I almost didn't say 20 videos. So I put seven features on every website that I, that I, uh, for every course, just because it seems like a, oh, there's going to be like seven topics. Like that feels obtainable. So this was kind of a test, like seeing seven videos versus still doing seven features, but also mentioning 20 videos to see how it worked out. The videos are short. They're like, you know, five to 10 minutes long. Yo, this is Rob from The Edit, just letting you know that if you tuned in on Spotify, Apple, or another audio-only platform, that the Yo! podcast is now in video on YouTube. Head over to yo.fm forward slash YouTube to experience a lot of the media paired with the conversation. And if you're already tuned in on a video platform, like you're watching on Twitter or on YouTube, you know what to do. Please like and subscribe. It goes a long way. Okay, back to the interview. It's quite interesting just sidestepping to being course creator um, I've also got a course I'm in the works with but if I give myself a constraint of eight videos I'm going to make those eight videos absolutely fantastic you know because that's all I've got exactly but if you gave me 16 I would take you know probably 
doubled amount of time and it's probably not gonna be as good yeah no for sure for sure and one of the reasons that it's like mine is 20 videos is because i'd say like six to eight of those videos are like real recordings of me talking to clients so they're not actual like you know recorded course videos or just something i had and i could put in there as like extra content that's depth though that's great that's someone they appreciate i saw some tweets about that yeah, I mean, it was, it's kind of scary to put some of that stuff out there because, you know, it's a little, little private, you know, a little intimate there, but so far so good, you know, and it's all about teaching, it's all about helping other people. That's, that's where the real joy comes from. We got a question here from Fraser from Aberdeen, Scotland. Right on. Hey, Dan, this is Fraser from Aberdeen, Scotland. I was just wondering, how do you decide what to focus on or rather what not to focus on? I always think you must have so many options and opportunities to choose from. I'd love to know how you choose what to focus on next. Yeah, that's a great question. I, I don't know if I figured it out yet or not. To be honest, as you can tell, I do a lot of stuff, you know? I, I'll, guide, I'll guide you through it a little. Okay. Um, what is a clean no? Like someone reaches out to you, wants to collab on something. What's an easy no? I don't say no easy because I love to do a lot of different things, you know? I love to collab with people. I love... I, I just have to be moving, you know? I like to stay creative. I like to, I'm not the type of person that can work on one project and only one project for years at a time. I don't see how people do that. And there are so many designers that do that. And I'm just like, how? That's why freelancing was so attractive to me because I could work with all these different clients. And I got, and it gave me time to do side projects and things like that. So, you know, wh whatever has the biggest benefit to me and the other person and the other people that we're trying to do something for is easy yeses. If it doesn't tick all those boxes or at least two of those boxes, it's it's more likely a no, I would say. But if it has a lot of benefits all the way around, and I'm not even talking financially, I'm just talking just benefits, you know, creative benefit, design practice benefit, friendship, relationship growing benefit just helping other people learn something benefit you know that if those are easy yeses you know talking about uh you know stimulation and the work you do you've been creating these ultra fun commercials you know you've done commercials for brands like contra spline relume framer webflow it looks like you're having the time of your life making these shorts it's so much fun Hey, package for Dan? Hey, babe, one second. Yeah, that's me. Hey, cool. Dude, nice place. W what do you do for a living? Oh, uh, thanks, man. I'm a spline expert on Contra.com. Oh, so like a chiropractor thing? Because, man, I got this, like, posture situation. No, 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 no. Spline. Not spine. Spline. There's an L in it. It's, I absolutely love it. Like, having this as a creative outlet is just, it's, it's incredible. I get to write. I get to, you know, work on filming, lighting, audio stuff. And now I've, I've got a couple of friends here in town that are wanting to help me with some of the stuff. So we're able to do bigger things. Recently, re recently I rented a, a Lamborghini for a commercial and I got to drive it around Nashville. That was fun. Uh, you know, it's just, it's super fun. I actually just filmed one for Webflow. Another one for Webflow it should come out soon. I guess by the time this podcast is out. And how does it work? Do you, do you have tons of ideas? Like for example, Lambo idea, like, are you making notes permanently and then the brand comes along you're like oh that matches with one of my ideas or does the brand approach first and then you're like okay no starting fresh yeah they they come to me and they hey we need a commercial we have this new feature launching and i'm like all right let's go i'll i'll create you something they don't ask for the script they don't ask for anything to see they just they just trust the process and that's what makes it fun now once people have to see the script and do feedback and everything it, it takes the fun out of it for me and i'm only doing this for fun i mean i, I do get paid for pretty good for it but if it became a a hassle to do I, I can have so much more higher paid work than than that that i could deal with it, it, it's really fun because people just trust me and, and uh I, I like that they let me be myself right dude just use the captions you're making a video right We'll just say the word out loud and the captions will show us how to spell it. Skewmorphism. Skewmorphism. Skew. Skew just write it down. Oh, right. <laughs> What's wrong now? After skewmorphism design, 
I have to do neomorphism design. Yeah, I hope, hopefully that doesn't change. But that's otherwise that I don't do too much because there, there's a lot of people that wanted videos and wanted commercials. I mean, a lot. And I just had to tell them no because they want this whole process. They want to see like five different scripts. And I'm just like, what? I can't write five scripts. I'm not even a writer, first of all. You know? Um, I'm, I'm lucky these turned out decent so far. <laughs> it's great. It's such a unique side gig, though, because you've not actually given it this constraint saying, you know, here's the six I've done on my site. And if you like this flavor, then it's like, cool, we're on. But it, if you're asking for scripts, we're off. Exactly. So let's uh, roll the dice. Yeah. And that's quite rad. You know, you're in full control there. And then there it's, but then again, the, I think the outcome is definitely better than if you had to take that back and forth with legal man. Oh, dude. Yeah. Wow. It's, hey, I, I've, I've, I've said no more than yes on these videos. Because it also has to be something that I want to promote. I, this it, These video commercials might only be in this stage where it's just me doing it for fun. I'll put it on my Twitter. But once people want to put it on their YouTube and, and wherever they're promoting things and like they want, still want me to promote it and it's a product I don't even use, I'm like, oh. now it just didn't become fun. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know what I'm promoting here. That's it. Like I think of the, the brands that have approached One Page Love over the 15 years it's been live and it's it's delicate, man. I once promoted a, a really poor hosting company and it was live for, I think, a week and I just, I, I couldn't sleep, dude. It's just like not worth it. It's like your your integrity goes down. There's, it's not authentic. That's why now I'm only trying to work with less brands and I want to sign a deal as long as I can. You so, you know, working with a long deal with, with Webflow and they approached me and they just said, Rob, what can we do to, you know, spotlight web, Webflow within the gallery? We don't want to, you know, you can still add other other network, like frameworks. You can still add templates for Frame and Squarespace and whatever you need. You know, we don't want to change how you do things, but how can we spotlight? So we went back and forth, back and forth. The team has been incredible. And we came up with a deal like sort of four slots one, the header navigation says like build a one pager and it it links directly to Webflow. Hey? That's awesome. And you can you can create a one page website with Webflow. Like that was a real sweetener. Like we went back and forth, we refined this thing over a long time. But another one is that if a one page is built with Webflow, it's got this baby little blue badge just in the corner that's like the little Webflow logo, and no other platform gets that. But it again, it's like it's subtle, it's clean. Sure, it's a little biased, but you know what? They're the sponsor of the site and they, they allow me to do whatever I want for 12 months. That's pretty incredible, man. Webflow going to get a little blue badge, dude. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that, that's exactly how these go. Man, good for Webflow for, for doing that. That's incredible. You're probably asking yourself right now, why am I listening to a bearded, balding, white homeschooled male talking at me through my very computer screen? And to be honest, I have no clue why you are. But now that I've got you here... I'm on an upcoming episode of Yo! Podcast, and if you subscribe, we're going to talk all about horror movies and hot sauce, but most importantly, community, as well as building rad shit for the web. Hope to see you there. So dream brand you'd like to do a fun commercial with? It's always been this one brand, and they will not work with me because they have designers, they don't need help. That's why, but I've been trying to work with them from, from day one. Burden snowboards. I have so many friends that work there. They just won't let me touch it. Oh, man. It's so frustrating. But that's the one client out of... I've worked with every dream client that there is. Every one of them. I've, I've nicked all those boxes. Except for Burton. So what about just creating a commercial? Just doing it anyway? I mean... It's not a bad idea. I don't think I'm a good enough snowboarder to pull something off. Maybe that's a good, then maybe that's why it stands out because you know, all their stuff is always like just like epic and you know the coolest looking people yeah, yeah, with their yeah. gear. So maybe they need like a 40 year old man that is not the best snowboarder in the world to, to make a cool <laughs> commercial. Or uh, well, you can put a beard on a 20 year old with a red beanie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I mean, that's actually not a, not a bad idea to just make one. I, I do believe in doing stuff like that. If you, if there's somebody you really want to work with, I mean, that's how my Nixon job happened. Uh, you know, you just do it. So we got a question here from Sid from Amsterdam. There are so many folks who say they're inspired by you. Who are you inspired by? 
who are the Ramones to dance Blink-182? Shane Milky. Uh, and uh, if, if it had to be like a, a group, like the, the Blink-182 Blink would be two advanced studios, of course, where Shane Milky worked. No brainer. Easy. He, I'm pretty sure he's still at um, SpaceX. So, you know, the rockets that go up now into space, he does the interface design for those rockets. I was just like, wild hair. How could you get more of a dream job than that? And of course, only Shane Mielke has that job. Like, it's just like, oh, yeah, of course, it makes so much sense. Uh, he used to design all the interfaces for games like the and the movie websites and things like that. Like, He's done the coolest stuff there is. And of course, he's still doing the coolest stuff there is. But yeah, he I, I really wish he would share more. He's so cool. He's the coolest dude. Coolest dude. <laughs> Dad, let's jump into a second intermission. You want to play, play another game? Oh, yeah. Is this one going to be as hard as the first one? <laughs> it's going to be a lot easier. It's called Overrated, Underrated. Okay? So I'm going to give you a topic, a brand, a person, and you just need to quick fire back. If you feel it's overrated, underrated, or properly rated, if you feel like the world has kind of even eye on it. Let's do it. Photoshop. <laughs> Just go right into the hard stuff. Underrated. We should use Photoshop more. Flash. Underrated. Uh, bring it back. Where is it? Where is it? Is that the right answer? There's no wrong answer, but that's the right answer. Uh, yeah, yeah, but that is the right answer. <laughs> Pour over coffee. Mm. Properly rated. Dan's organic surf diet. Lose the pounds and the reflux. Okay. Properly rated. Drones. Oh, we're rated. Boosted boards. Underrated. Colorful gradients. Underrated. White space. Underrated. Client logos in the hero of your portfolio. Overrated. 21 Pilots. Properly rated. Jack Johnson. Underrated. Ukuleles. Underrated. Working for free as a junior designer. Underrated. Dot com domains. Underrated. Newsletter marketing. Overrated. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't check my email. Twitter. Underrated. And lastly, YouTube. Underrated. Okay, you've been making these design commercials as well as the bi-weekly portfolio critiques. You're already doing awesome. All right, let's dig into some of these. All right, this first one here is already just absolutely amazing. I mean, you've got the name, you've clearly got what to do, independent brand designer, and just this beautiful work. And if I'm not mistaken, you're uploading them directly into Twitter. Why aren't these going on YouTube? YouTube stresses me out, man. I just, I don't... Uh... I, I can't I can only handle so much commentary. And the commentary is different on YouTube versus Twitter or X now. I also I can only really I got four kids, I'm a family of six, I got work to do. I can only focus on one platform. And I know it's so easy just to upload to Twitter or upload to YouTube as well and Instagram too. I mean just upload it everywhere, right? I just don't care. I don't care. And I'm not trying to grow anything. I'm not trying to I've been there. I've done that. I don't know. I not, I don't need anything extra. I don't want extra attention. I love Twitter. They're starting to, you know, be more video focused, and I can see a future in that. I'm just I'm just leaning into it. I'm leaning into it. That's where I am every day. I'm not on YouTube every day. I just don't know. I just I don't have that care to grow there. I don't want to. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. And it's sad. I probably should have. Because it's it's so easy, but no, but it's not easy. I I love I love the answer. It's, it's very similar to what how Traff approaches a lot of things. It's exactly what he said as well. You know, I was like, why? You know, you have one email list, and then you release the course, and then do you have any follow up emails for someone who doesn't purchase? And he's just like, man, there's only so much I could do, dude. Like, what are you talking about? Like reminder emails. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but he like he's like he's like, dude, I'm not gonna do that, dude. Like, dude. yeah, it's just time, you know. I I don't have that time. And somebody sent me a tweet the other day, like angry, like an angry tweet. Like, why do you you have a a domain for everything? You just keep doing all this stuff. And 
well, how come everything's mixed everywhere? And I'm just like, because it's fun. I, do, I don't know. I don't have time to pay someone to put it all on the one thing. So it's easier for me to just do one thing. And I enjoy it. It's fun to come up with a name, a domain name, and just to launch something new. That's exciting. That's the most exciting part of being creative. Like to maintain it and like to ensure it makes money. It's like it kills you a little bit. The hardest part about YouTube and probably and another main reason I don't do it is because you have to make a thumbnail. I don't want to make a thumbnail. And you know how hard it is to make thumbnails? Like, come on, let's be real. You got to test them. You got to make them right. You got to make it stand out. That's a whole job in itself. Yeah, sure. You can hire people. There's people that do that. But I don't know, man. Yeah, I mean, you're speaking speaking my language here. And, and Twitter is reinvesting in video. They really need to sort out their video search and video cataloging somehow. Oh, yeah. It's like if you can have a folder on your Twitter profile that just says design commercials with just your best tweets and then someone can just like browse them and then just liking them, sharing them, wow, that would be very helpful for you. Oh, yeah, it'd be, it'd be huge. But they are linked from your main site, so you're doing a great job there. Just to give you some props there. They're on your site, d- design commercial link to that's You're doing so a pretty good sure. thing. But on t- on YouTube, all of a sudden you do it for the brand, but if you don't have the right thumbnail and it doesn't get the right traction, your your title's wrong, then all of a sudden it doesn't perform well. And then your brand's like, yeah, you know, dude. you're like, dude, how are we playing this game? It's so risky. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. So, so let's step here quick. I assume you, you're making good revenue from the spread of things you're doing. To hire a video editor full-time is a possibility. And they could take all your content from Twitter and they can make that jump shot. They can create those thumbnails. They can probably grow your YouTube channel to quite a place. Why not? I just, oh, I've thought about this so many times. And then it just, it's just like, okay, yeah, sure, more work. Just hiring someone. You got to find the right person. That sounds stressful. That sounds so stressful. You know, trusting them with your content and like also seeing the behind the scenes of your content where I'm just sitting there standing at the camera like uh uh and you just flum fumble my words nonstop and seeing all the takes it takes just to make a short little thing. That that part is probably one of the most stressful ones. Even this podcast, like I know exactly what I want to extract. Like we've been sidestepping all over the place and I dig it because it's gonna make a really good podcast when I extract the rad bits. But like how am I gonna outsource that? Yeah, see, that's that's the thing too. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I almost hired somebody to to edit the reconfirmed design process course. I have a friend here that would happily do it just for, I mean, quite frankly, a little bit of money, a lot to them, but a little bit of money for what the course was uh, made. But then the pieces that I took out of the course, I remember saying this thing at a certain time, and I remember I, I know the emotion I want to 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 have during these certain conversations and. Only I can do that, you know? Yo, this is Grace Walker. Don't forget to hit subscribe. I'm coming up on an episode of the Yo! Podcast too. Man, there's so much stuff that overlaps with what I'm doing. So what software are you using to edit? Premiere Premiere Pro. And you've gotten pretty fast than I assume. I mean, not as fast as a lot of people. I'm still learning every time, but I've I've got it down pretty pretty good. And I, you know, I, I understand the design process a lot. Of course, I made a course on it. So I understand how to just kind of move quickly through the thing and not try to over-perfect. And that's helped my editing a lot, you know? Great. So, I mean, I could, I could, I, you could work on an edit for weeks and weeks and weeks and it's still not 100% to where you want it, but I'm not going to do that. Who has time for that? You know, I'm sure even the movies people put out, there's still things they would like to fix, you know, but if they can't work on it forever, you just got to get this stuff out. 100%. And that's really what the clients want, the people that I'm working on the commercials with. They want they want it out there. They want the conversations to start. They don't want to wait. It's just, I want to sidestep into something just a little bit on the spot. You know, a lot of the stuff you do is you're critiquing these existing sites. And I just want to, you know, put a cap on it. Let's take two minutes max. And all I want is for you to tell me if you have a first time freelance portfolio, you're starting from a blank canvas verbally sketch this for me and they have work to show they have three projects just three projects okay all right yeah three existing clients okay it's pretty pretty simple pretty straightforward you want a very clear headline you know what it is you do i'm a web designer 
if it's web design, you know, be crystal. You don't want to say like, I'm a passionate user experience designer, you know, with the joy for, I don't know, whatever it is. You don't want to ramble on and all this. Stuff. You just say web designer. I used to say I'm always available freelance web designer. People get that right away. I'm available. They understand I'm freelance. They understand I'm a web designer. What else could you ask for? It doesn't get more crystal clear than that. You could do a little subtext too, smaller if you want to, saying your name and where you're from and whatever else. You focus on startup stuff if you want to. I don't think you need to. Then a clear CTA on your, with your email address. Don't say contact me. Don't say whatever. It's your email address. So hey at danpay.com would be exactly what it is right there. That's the main call to action. And then you'd have your work above the fold there, the, or the viewport, whatever you want to call it. Yes, it still exists. You want your work up there at least teased up there if you have more if you have more to show you can only you can you could show um you know a little top piece of the other ones you got otherwise get all the work up there and no navigation unless you want you know to anchor link down below the page or something avatar up top in the top left with your twitter avatar your instagram avatar whatever your avatars are keep it consistent if you can have that there and no fancy logo just your name and you're ready to rock and roll. Don't don't try to don't try to overdo it. Personal opinion, highly personal opinion. Don't say you're a studio. Don't say you're an agency. Don't get fancy with it. Just say your name and get straight to the point. Then just get it up there. Then over time, you can start to do your agency thing and whatever else. Start extracting some yeah. testimonials. Yeah, get up. You got it. If nobody knows you exist, how how do you think you're gonna get work? You, you got to get up there now. And it takes time even when you do have it up there to get work. So get it up, you know? I mean, just winding down, like I just want to go a little deeper. Uh, I subscribed to your newsletter a little while ago and you shared a, a kind of a deep dive into a bout of anxiety you were having. You were having some panic attacks, um, you know, quite a while ago. How, how are you doing now? Thanks for asking. Uh, but yeah, it means a lot that you uh, thought, thought to ask that. Um, doing better I wouldn't say great. You know, it's something I'm going to be struggling with for a long time, probably. But a lot better. I've um, accepted that this is something I'm I'm going to deal with and, and found ways to, you know, manage it. It's 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 a real thing. It's a real thing people deal with. And uh, yeah, better. I mean, this is just for the thought exercise. Do you feel like if you halved everything you're doing, you would halve your anxiety? Yes and no. I'm just an anxious person. have been ever since I was little. And, you know, obviously wasn't doing a lot of work when I was little. In a way, it, it helps calm me. You know, I'm I, I very, very ADHD. I need many things to do. When I don't have a lot to do, then I get worried. Then I get like, I feel like that's when the anxiety really hits in. So when I have a lot to do, it, it, it actually kind of calms me, ironically. So I think, it, I think it needs to be less stress stuff, less pressured stuff. Like when I you know, used to work with clients and many projects at once, just treated myself as a studio, but there's, it came a lot of pressure trying to please all these people all the time. You know, it's, the service work is hard. Service work is really hard. You're, you're always pleasing people. Find ways to cut out the, the, the stuff I don't enjoy that brings stresses for sure. Cutting that in half. It's hard to do for some people. Some people, they don't have a choice. They got to do it, you know? Got a question here from a Drew Wilson from San Diego. Oh, Drew. He says, can I get a health talk? <laughs> you know what's funny? I've, in all my career, I've never, ever been invited to a conference to talk about design. Never. Drew Wilson is the only one that invited me, and it wasn't for design. He wanted me to do a health talk. I'm like, what in the world, dude? But I was I was so into health at the time because I had you know this severe panic situation. It, it made for a great conversation. I thought ValioCon, ValioCon, yeah. The the original conference creator for designers, in, independent designers, Drew Wilson, awesome human. So let's just take it on a on the mental health level. Um, just for people listening out there, you. Do you have huge projects and a lot of them, um, you know, it's 20 years invested in your craft. 
and you're very open and transparent with how much you can earn from certain projects, you know, with the bigger, you know, the, M the MSG Sphere stuff, you know, you got a couple of really high paying gigs, but you're still kind of busy doing other stuff, you know, and, and a lot of people out there, expenses, healthcare, four kids, etc. But like, how much is enough? Do you, do you have a cap you're trying to aim for in a year? Or is it like, I just need to fill my 10 hours a day. Are you aiming for a, a number every year? Damn, that's a good question. I probably should aim for a number every year, but I don't. Like, how much is enough? I, that's, a, that's a good question. I, I have enough. And I'm not the type of person that is always in their finances and, you know, trying to penny push and, you know, keeping a, a huge uh, budget and everything. It's just not the way I operate. I mean, my wife tries to do that sometimes, too. As long as all the bills are being paid and I'm still having fun and creating and have work to do, I'm happy. I, I don't. There's been times when I felt like I had too little, you know, only because I screwed up in areas like hosting events. I don't think anyone ever really should do that unless they're a big company with a lot of money. Cause that stuff is expensive. Don't do that. I, I was in debt. Just hire the Ritz. Yeah, yeah. I've written out the entire Ritz Carlton. I thought I'd be okay. I don't know. What... <laughs> I actually did break even on that one. Oh, and then like taxes, you know, when you were early on, you forget, you know, let's just like forget about taxes. You don't fully understand taxes. And as a freelancer, it's super important that you you understand taxes. So that, you know, that takes a long time to 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 figure out. And you, you learn from your mistakes, you know, through that. Of course, living in California too, it's outrageous. Yeah, just as long as I know things are getting paid, I'm not stressed, everything, you know, we can do extra stuff when we need to. I can cover services that have to happen, you know, on your cars and whatnot, then I'm good. I don't need millions and millions of dollars. Sure, it'd be great. I could I would just hang out with my kids. You would not see me on Twitter probably. <laughs> At least I would take a very long break. Uh, cause the the mental stuff I have to put with put up with on Twitter. Wow. Whew. I don't understand. Shots fired. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all part of it. Dan, thank you for taking a moment in your busy schedule. I want to have a coffee with you one day in your coffee shop Ooh. when all is said and done on Design Twitter. Let's make it happen, man. Yeah, that'd be that'd be awesome. We're gonna play this one out with some classic surf rock vibes. Where can the Yo Podcast listeners follow your journey online? Y'all can follow me on the one and only X Twitter slash at Dan Petty. Dan with two ends. That's really it. That's where I'm at. All day, every day. Dan, thanks. Take care. Likewise. how i try to go it's like it's like a goof then a little bit of little bit of shop some goof and at the end we went deep yeah you, you're great at this dude like you can tell you've been doing it for a long time you, you know how to how to how to organize it all and, and make people feel comfortable so kudos to you